Hey guys, so I originally uh, recorded about 15 minutes of the history of collectible card games, deck builders, and uh, Game of Thrones, which I've already released a video for, which I think came out pretty well, um, uh, but it, was, it made the video too long and I wanted to get right into the game, so I'm going to release this as uh, number two, I think, and it's just about 15 minutes. It tells you a little bit about the history of uh, all the variations of this card game, so I hope you enjoy. Actually, really quickly before we jump to the table, uh, I think I should just do two minutes here about uh, what a living card game is and how it's different from other uh, card games, collectible card games, and so forth that you might have heard of, that you might have played, that are at least out there. Um, because it is a relatively new model and is very specific, even though it works in some of the similar things. So the one that most people know about, and um, I heard today that they're averaging the um, board game industry at about a billion and a half dollars a year in this country. I think that's a low estimate, and it doesn't include Dungeons and Dragons and role playing, just card games and role playing. And the one that you've probably heard of, even if you've never played, um, going back to the '90s, that's about half of that billion and a half is. Magic the Gathering. You know, Magic is extremely popular. It keeps game stores alive. Unfortunately, the problem with Magic is they release so many cards, and they're random, like opening baseball cards when you're a kid, that it encourages an insane amount of buying thousands of dollars a year um, to get all the best cards. Um, that's called the chase, just so you have the best cards. Um, you know, Here's an example of some of them. Um, so, you, so if you want to compete, uh, there's not a lot of mid-level magic competition. There's some people who just buy old boxes and play for fun, and then there's very high level. But you need thousands of cards, especially because every few years they cycle the sets and say these aren't tournament ready anymore. So you have to buy new cards and new sets. That's called the chase. The other problem with magic is what they call the meta. And this happens with a ton of card games, is that the more cards you put out, the more the best cards actually rise to the top. And so there, there end up being, with all these thousands of cards, a, a handful of decks that win most uh, most tournaments um, or just most matches. Um, I'm not going to go into the dynamics of Magic having you know different elements and you can pick colors and whatever, but essentially what happens with Magic is you build your deck um, from all the cards that you have, assuming that they're all you know legal with whatever tournament you're you're playing, um, and then you lay out resources called mana, and then you just battle back and forth, battle, 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 battle. Um, that's a collectible card game be because you need to keep buying packs, and because you don't know, unfortunately, what is in those packs. I only have a handful <laughs> just to have around. I do not play Magic, can't afford Magic. Now, I did play a version of of Magic that's relatively new um, called Star Wars Destiny. Um, Star Wars Destiny. Um, the difference uh, between Star Wars Destiny and, and Magic is that I don't have them with me right now, but these numbers right here correspond to six sides of a die. So all the power cards, like weapons, like here's Ahsoka with her lightsabers, or there's Jin with a gun, Stormtrooper with a big gun. So each of them has a, a die. So as you play them, in various times you roll dice, which adds an element of, of luck that's good, adds variability to the game. Unfortunately, you end up with hundreds of cards per set in the same thing that every year or two, the previous few sets get bumped out. And so while these cards were very valuable at, at one time when I played a couple of years ago, they're not even tournament friendly at this point. So again, you have the chase, the high ex ex expense of the whole thing. And while Star Wars Destiny has more viable decks, and I'm going to have Jedi Geek Girl talk Talk about this on the Bizzlecast um, uh, has more viable decks at tournaments um, because they've tried to avoid the, the the very extreme meta as they call it, where there's only two or three good decks. Nevertheless, a few always rise to the top, and they're constantly adjusting both the rules and new cards to deal with that. Of course, the other collectible card game. Uh, there's two that you see with kids and adults, and it's of course Pokemon. The movie's out right now. There's my glossy Pokemon Libre. I don't know if that's worth anything, but it's cool because it's glossy. And I literally thought this card says, said Bizzle. Where's the camera? It says Blitzel. Uh, but that'll have to be my Pokemon uh, for now. Um, but Pokemon, as goofy as it is, is just a simplified version of what's going on in Magic. And again, you're buying tons of packs, you don't know what's in it, there's a chase for the best cards, it's very competitive. Um, but one thing that it shares with all the card games that we're going to talk about is that you need to put forth at least one type of resource. Pokemon, it's just energy. 
and in most cases it's something more like money in order for you to put cards on the table you can't just throw all your cards on the table so pokemon um i think in this order uh, Pokemon, and then Yu-Gi-Oh, which I don't have cards of, is very popular, and then Magic are the top collectible card games and earn at least half of all this money that I'm talking about. Now, the game that changed it all, um, which came out, oh, I don't know, when did the original come out? I should, of course, know this. Um, I would say... 10 to 12 years ago, maybe, maybe a little bit, or maybe 13 years ago, is called Dominion. Now, Dominion today has been overshadowed by a lot of other deck building games, but Dominion invented what's called the deck builder. Now, with Pokemon and Magic and those collectible card games, there is a mechanic where, yes, you can pick the 30 cards or 40 cards you're playing with, but you do have to shuffle them up and draw a certain amount per round. So there's a little bit of randomness, no matter how you plan on playing all 30 cards to destroy your opponent, it's not necessarily going to come out that way. So th that aspect of deck building was already in existence. But what Dominion did was say, what if we made a game where all of the cards that you would need were in a box... And in that initial box, in any expansions, you would know exactly which cards you're getting. Meaning, you, you, you might have to spend lots of money if you want all the cards, but you know what's in those boxes, and so you don't have to keep buying, keep buying, hoping to get that one card. In the initial box of Dominion, Vanilla Dominion as they call it, it looks huge. I think this has 500 cards. You never need to play uh, buy any other expansions for Dominion. But here's what Dominion did. Dominion starts both players with these same cards, and there's a marketplace for those cards. So basically, it goes like this. You start with some amount of money, right? Here's a copper, a silver, and a gold. And then there's a giant marketplace with, you know, 10 cards or whatever. Here I have a few. Let's see. A uh, festival. You can have a village library, market, and there's rules about how and when, what you can play and so forth, but the main thing is at the bottom, hopefully at your bottom right, um, uh, that's how much it costs, right? So let's say, okay, cost five. Well, I know I have a gold and a silver, that's three, so I'm going to take it. My opponent was welcome to take it, but it's still staying there, so I'm going to take it. So now I shuffle this in with my other cards. So now when I draw, I have a chance of getting a higher level card, and then you use this to get a higher level card, and higher and higher and higher. So it's it's a buy, sell, buy, sell. You're also trying to get, you know, crappy cards that don't do much, like a, like a one copper out of your deck. There's ways to do that. I won't go into that now. And ultimately, it's not just about money, but it's about scoring victory points. And different companies handle victory points very differently. But that is what they call deck building these days. It's not just building a deck like of your favorite Pokemon cards. It's actually a type of game where everything that you get is the same that everyone else gets. So if you're playing vanilla Dominion, meaning the original box, and you're playing against someone else who just has the original box, you literally have access to the same cards. And in fact, your friend doesn't even need it. There's enough cards in there for up to four players to play one another. So you start with the same cards, you have access to the same market, and so it's up to you about what you want to buy and how, and, you know, the, the, the deck building part is, I want to make my deck as great as possible, when I draw those five, six, seven cards per round, I don't necessarily know what I'm going to get, and so I'm going to have to deal with that. Now, they've, as classic as Dominion is, it's not particularly attractive, and it's just straight economic, you don't even have to communicate that much, and so the rest of the industry has taken this deck building and run with it, um, and I, the reason I wanted to explain, uh, First, the collectible card games and the deck building is there's elements of both in Game of Thrones, which we're about to jump to in a second, um, but it's very different. The element of, of collectible card games like Magic and Pokemon is that you buy the core set and then there are expansions, and you may or may not need to or want to buy expansions. But the difference is in why it's more like a deck building game, um, games like Game of Thrones, the living card games, is because in that core box, you get know exactly what you're getting, same cards as everybody else, you buy an expansion, 
By the way, I'm gonna open some of these expansions today. Um, I haven't even looked into this. Here's the House Stark expansion, but I know exactly what cards, I just go online, is in this box. It's priced the same for everyone, and maybe I'll play at a tournament where these cards aren't used, or maybe I will where you, you just pick one house, so I want all the Stark cards, but you know what you're getting, and so you don't have the chase, as they call it. It can be expensive, depending on who you're playing and what cards you're playing, but at least you know what you're getting, and usually with the core sets, and this is gonna be a big positive for Game of Thrones, is that you can get a lot out of just the core set, uh, the box that I showed you before, without having to buy expansions. So the deck, one great thing about deck building, and why it's one of my favorite games, is that they've managed to literally make huge games in small containers. This here is called Star Realms, okay? This has won a ton of awards and a lot of people's favorite games still. It's literally this big, and this includes score cards and like your base money cards and so forth. Now it's similar to Dominion in that you start with a bunch of $1 bills, basically, and then you have a trade, uh, you have a market, or what they call a trade row, where you can choose from the same cards as everyone else. Now, one thing that's, that, that Star Realms added that we're gonna talk about in Game of Thrones are factions. Um, now, factions in Star Realms, uh, it's pretty easy, and while there's been lots of expansions, and I, they kickstarted a second version called Frontiers, which I have over there, which I just, I, I kickstarted because I love them, I love this product, you can, these games can go 15 minutes, but you can play forever, even with just the original set, which you can get from 12 to $15. Highly, highly, highly recommended Star Realms. You can get it at Target, you can get it at Walmart, literally anywhere. But there's four factions, as you can see from the four colors, yellow is the Star Empire, blue is the Trade Federation, uh, you have the blob is the green and red is uh, I think called the mech cult or robot cult or something like that and they each kind of do different things. Uh, the red mech cult tends to get rid of cards from your deck that you don't want in there because you, you're trying to make it efficient. Um, the blob who are sort of like living space creatures that can be both funny looking and, and kind of weird. Um, they have a they have a great combination of money and firepower. Um, and uh, also you can use it to scrap cards in the middle that you don't want anyone else to get. So say, I can't afford this expensive six-cost battle cruiser. There's the cost, right? I can't get it, and I'm worried that the other player is going to get it, so I play a green card that scraps it out from, from the game. Um, and one of the great things that this added um, is... So the first line here, draw a card, is... Uh, the main action, right? So that's firepower in red, draw a card, a action. The second one where you see a, a repetition of the this, this symbol, the, here it's the yellow star empire, that activates is in any turn that you put down more than one of the same card. So at the moment, I don't have more than one from any of the factions, but as you can see there, those at the bottom and top, there's a red circle. There's a, two blues here. This one as well has two greens and here's two yellows. I just happened to pick these randomly. They don't all have that, um, but, but the synergizing of the cards is what makes the game really cool because then you want to specialize in one or two out of the four colors and then all of a sudden you're going from hitting your opponent for, you know, each person has 50 health points and at first it's like, oh, I hit you for one, I hit you for two, I hit you for one, I hit you for three. It seems to be going really slowly, but then you get something like this, which is powerful and draw a card and all of a sudden you're drawing, even though you start with five, one draw a card, one draw a card, boom, 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 and so this takes deck building into the next level because you literally need only this fifteen dollar box and have so much variation. I've played literally over fifteen hundred games online over the last couple years. The app is amazing; you can just play on your iPad or iPhone or so forth. It's extremely fun. It's much faster, more fun, and colorful than Dominion. Much easier to get into. I mean, you know, again, it's a five hundred card box with lots of rules versus this guy right here, um, uh, which you know. Is, is literally all that you need. So, okay, so how's a living card game different? Well, living card game, and now I'm really gonna take you to the other camera, is like a deck builder, you know what's in the box, right? You get this core set, right? You buy this core set, 30 bucks, great investment. Comes with 192 player cards, gold tokens, power thing, everything that you need to get started, all the cards and all the little tokens and gold things you need to get started are in this box. 
And I'm going to talk about why this is one of the best corsets in terms of not needing expansions, but because I'm getting more into it, um, they're offering um, expansions for particular houses that you are into. So with the living card game, you can buy expansions or not, but like with the core set, any expansions, you know exactly what are in it. Now, some tournaments are going to just be for more casual players, um, so it'll be just a core set. They're not assuming you get anything else. Some, you you know should or get all the expansions, especially for your favorite house that you're going to play, the Starks, the Targaryens, whatever, um, uh, in order to, to, to compete most. But again, there's not a chase. You can, you can budget it. You can say, okay, I have to buy these expansions, but I know how much they're going to cost and what I'm going to get. So with that, let me actually flip you around and we will get into some of the basics of what's in the box, why I think it's cool, and then send you on your way. Hopefully research more and uh, we'll go from there.